We're in front of the Shedd Aquarium at Chicago's museum campus by the lake. In 1933, this was the entrance to another city, the 1933 World's Fair. Buildings and boulevards stretched for miles along the lakefront south of here, and there was color everywhere. These two entryway columns, one was blue, the other red. Those flags in the distance along the avenue were bright red, hanging from 90-foot poles. Entire buildings were painted bright colors, 25,000 gallons of paint to paint the city in 28 special colors. So many colors, it was called the Rainbow City. This is where the Avenue of Flags began. The Sears Roebuck Building is there ahead on the right. By 1933, Americans had seen three decades of astonishing inventions. The radio, telephone, films, cars, planes, skyscrapers, and then World War and the Great Depression. Chicago had been at the center of it. Though the fair marked the 100-year anniversary of the city, its goal was to give hope for a future. The fair was named a century of progress. The motto of the fair was, science finds, industry applies, man conforms. Airplanes, blimps, balloons, and high-speed trains came to the fair to set records, and exhibitions showcased the new processes of the newest products and technical innovations. But what drew the largest crowds was the life at the fair, the new public beer halls, the dancers, parades and rides, and the lights. At night, the city within the city was lit up with miles of colored neon and millions of light bulbs. After a day's work, people would carouse in the streets and at the cafes late into the night until they turned off the lights at 3 a.m. Sally Rand, a burlesque dancer at the Streets of Paris exhibition, became the star of the fair with her daring risque performances, frequent arrests, and determination to make it big despite her humble roots. She was the heroine of the fair's other motto, Chicago's motto, I will. Across the marina, Northerly Island was a centerpiece of the fair. Those three towers across the water are the federal building, and next to us, the entertainment venues, the bandstand, and the Canadian Club Cafe. Chicago had been infamous for Prohibition-era bootlegging, now, in 1933, beer is legal in Chicago and it's being sold out in the open in cafes like this. By the end of the year, prohibition ends and you can buy Century of Progress souvenir bottles of Canadian Club whiskey. But at the fair, there were other ways to get high. And just roll along, just roll along your way. 1933, we've paid maybe seven cents to ride the elevated train to downtown, 50 cents to enter the fair. Another 25 cents will get us a ride on the sky ride. Laugh at your troubles and give in. The sky ride was the super sensation of the fair, like the Eiffel Tower in Paris or the Ferris wheel at the Columbian Exposition. Two 628-foot towers, the tallest things in Chicago, and all to give a view. You could stand at the tops, higher than the Washington Monument, or right across the marina in windowed cable cars. Hello, stranger. This is where the rocket cars took you across the marina. You can see where we've been below, the Avenue of Flags, the Canadian Club Cafe and Bandstand, the bridge and the Federal Building across the marina. Things look different from above. Shaking those polka dots. You're gonna get an eyeful, you'll die full of joy and cloud with. Since 1929, Americans had been suffering through the Great Depression, unemployment, poverty, hopelessness. Flying above this city, looking down on a hundred years of struggle along the lake's shore, it all seemed somehow ordered, destined, together, an image of hope. The top of the tower. Millions of people took elevators up the towers to see this view. You can see four states from here.
That distant white tower along the lake to the south is a 218-foot thermometer built by the Haveline Oil Company. Just beyond it were the streets of Paris and the Italian village where Sally Rand performed throughout the day and night. Now we're up where the Eastern Skyride Tower was. Halloween 1934 was the last day of the fair. Over the next year, everything that had been built was taken down. Crowds gathered to see this Eastern Skyride Tower demolished, one of the last reminders of the fair. Chicago wouldn't build this tall again for another 30 years, long after the Second World War. Progress. Chicago, the second city, built up, burned down, and built again. Two world's fairs, two stars on the flag, built and destroyed. By 1933, Chicago had led the world for 50 years in urban growth, skyscrapers, industry, and didn't know what was next. Travel to the moon, splitting the atom, connecting the populations of the world together into an instantaneous network. The motto of the fair, science finds, industry applies, man conforms. A century of progress. Or, flying high above this city, you think of the other motto, Chicago's motto. I will. Hold your feet and just roll along, just roll along your way. Shuffle your worrying.